My name is Leslie Stone. I'm a collection specialist here in the Special Collections Department of the Tampa Library. One of my primary duties in this position is working with our collection of medieval manuscripts. Special Collections is fortunate to own one complete medieval manuscript, which I have here in front of me today. This manuscript dates from the 14th century, and it is a liturgical manuscript, that is, it was used during the church services. It does not have its original binding. This is a, a contemporary binding. It's leather stretched over boards, so it is a bit deceiving that it does not look as old as it is. As a medieval manuscript, the entire thing was written by hand, and it is written on vellum. Paper did not make its way to Europe until around 1450, so for about a thousand years of book production, everything was written on parchment or vellum, which is the prepared skin of an animal. And this is actually a pretty good example on the way vellum can be prepared. If you take a look at the first two pages, this is the skin side, it's got a yellow tone to it. And the next two pages are much more smoother. This is going to be the, f the, the flesh side of the animal. One good thing about manuscripts, because they don't have page numbers, page numbers were introduced with the printing press, so when you're faced with a manuscript, you want to determine if it's missing any pages. One easy way to do this is to make sure that the sides of the parchment match up. That's to say you should always have two yellow or, or skin side facing, then you should have two white or flesh side facing. If you ever have a flesh side facing a skin side, that's a good indicator that a page is missing. You can always check the Latin text, but just in case you're not familiar with Latin, this is a little, little bit of a shortcut. We know that this book is not complete, because some of the pages, here's a good example, you do have a flesh side facing a hair side, and the color difference is a bit obvious. So you can tell some pages are missing. What you don't know, is it one page or is it several pages? Simply no way to tell unless we were to translate the whole text and match them up. This entire thing is written in Latin, and it's been written in black ink, but it does have some color. It's got red ink and blue ink used for the initials. One thing to keep in mind with medieval manuscripts is they didn't have chapter headings, just like modern books do. They also didn't have title pages. So the only way to sort of give a visual reminder that there's a new chapter or reading is by highlighting the initials in a different color. And throughout this missile, they go from red to blue throughout the text. And that's a good indicator of the start of a reading. You'll also see some text written in red ink. These are called rubrics, which comes from the Latin word rubrum, meaning red. And this is also a little visual indicator to tell you that it's the start of a new reading. Modern liturgical books or modern books used in churches today also adhere to the same scheme. They usually have a single column of black text, they'll have larger initials, and they also have rubrics. I mentioned before that the binding is not original. And one of the key indicators is if you take a look at the, the notes in the margin, they've been cut off. This book has a lot of notations in the margin. It's written down there, either corrections or just simply notes. The words have been cut off, and that's a very good indicator that the manuscript was actually chopped down when it was rebound. We know that this text is a missal. That's the book used for the celebration of the Mass. This would actually sit up on the altar that the priest would read from. And the beginning rubric tells us exactly that. It's got an initial prayer. Here we have the big initial blue, forms the letter I. The letter next to that is N, so your first word is N. If you keep reading, it tells us in nomine de patris, this ET is and, in nomine de patris et filii et spiriti sancti. So automatically, just by knowing that first line, we know that it's a liturgical text. But later on, it does tell us that it was for the use of a Carthusian missal. So we know that this book was used for the celebration of the Mass and that we know it was used by a Carthusian monastery.